presentation describes what needs to be done in fulfillment of Social Requirement 5 of the High Carbon Stock Approach, or the HCSA. It is one of four training videos dedicated to this topic of the operationalization of Social Requirement, or SR5. This first video provides an introduction to SR5 and what is required for its fulfillment, and the next three go into more detail on implementation. SR5 requires developers to protect the food security and livelihoods of indigenous people and local communities that are affected by their operations. It is one of 14 social requirements of the HCSA, which together aim to ensure that its members respect human rights and achieve no exploitation as part of their commodity production operations. The social requirements are grounded in international human rights norms, as set out in the UN Declaration on Human Rights, or the UNDHA, and the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, or UNDRIP, as well as in other internationally recognised human rights mechanisms. Articles in both these mechanisms refer directly to the protection of food security and livelihoods. The full text of the SRs, including SR5, can be found in Module 2 of the HCS Toolkit, which is available on the HCSA website. The principle of SR5 is set out here. It can be broken down into four separate components or stipulations, all of which must be fulfilled for these rights to be effectively protected by land developers. These stipulations are firstly, in stipulation 5.1, that developers must identify, avoid and mitigate any negative impacts on food security and livelihoods of communities affected by their operations. Secondly, in stipulation 5.2, they must ensure that sufficient land and other resources are set aside, taking future needs into account and with the free prior and informed consent or FPIP of communities needed for any changes to these allocations. Thirdly, in stipulation 5.3, companies must achieve overall positive impacts on community welfare, which is co-defined with communities. And fourthly, stipulation 5.4 states that developers must conduct independent monitoring of the implementation of its operations and of the social impacts in order to ensure that the first stipulations are in fact being achieved. These four stipulations of SR5 are fulfilled in practice in part through the conduct of a series of studies and assessments. These are the social background study, the land tenure and use study, the Social and Environmental Impact Assessment, or SEIA, and the HCV-HCSA Assessment. These studies and assessments are carried out with the participation of communities, and they cover all communities that are likely to be affected by the planned operation, whether directly or indirectly. Engagement with communities takes place throughout the process, and their free, prior and informed consent, or FPIC, must be sought and obtained before any field-based assessment. The information about current land use and livelihood patterns that is collected and analysed in these studies and assessments forms the basis for the development of detailed plans and arrangements for how the food security and livelihood of these communities will be protected if the planned operation goes ahead. Information on the conduct of these assessments is provided in Appendix 2 and 3 of the Implementation Guide and in the HCV HCSA Assessment Manual, supplemented by HCSA Advice Note 1. Guidance on the conduct of SEIAs can be found on the website of the International Association for Impact Assessment, or the IAIA. Further details on the implementation process for fulfilling SR5 are given in the next training video. A proposed Integrated Conservation Land Use Plan, or ICLUP, is then developed in conjunction with communities. This translates the information collected and analysed in the assessments into a proposed land use plan along with associated management and monitoring plans. This includes proposed allocations and locations of areas for community needs. It includes the proposed arrangements for access to conservation areas for community members for hunting, fishing, and the collection of non-timber forest products, or NTFPs. It also sets out details of the employment opportunities that will be created by the operation and their conditions. This includes the number of short-term contract and permanent positions, as well as wage rates and benefits. 
these must be in line with SR11 on labour rights. Planned outgrowth schemes and any contributions to social and economic infrastructure by the company are also included. All these elements are relevant to the protection of communities' food security and livelihoods in the context of the major land use change that is being planned. These proposals and plans are then the subject of fine tuning and negotiations between companies and communities and a final ICLUB is developed. If communities give their FPIC to this final ICLUB, it is then implemented in the operations stage and periodic monitoring is conducted of its social impacts to ensure that the arrangements are working effectively and that food security and livelihoods are being protected in practice. Detailed information on the development and implementation of the ICLUB is found in the HCSA ICLUB guidance. The HCV HCSA assessment manual and the SR's implementation guidance also include relevant guidance. There is considerable overlap between what is required to fulfil SR5 and the protections for food security and livelihoods of local communities that are contained in other sustainability mechanisms. These include the Roundtable for Sustainable Palm Oil, or the RSPO, and the Forestry Stewardship Council, or the FSC. Members of the HCSA operating in the palm oil and the pulp and paper sector may well be members of these other sustainability mechanisms. All of these mechanisms aim to protect the same underlying human rights. The methods used to achieve the fulfilment of these rights in practice are also similar, involving the conduct of participatory social impact assessments, such as the SEIA, followed by the development of operational plans based on them, including management and monitoring mechanisms. Criterion 4.5.4 of the RSPO principles and criteria, for example, states, to ensure local food and water security as part of the EPIC process, participatory SEIA and participatory land use planning with local peoples, the full range of food and water provisioning options are considered. There is transparency of the land allocation process. In the FSC system, food security and livelihoods are protected as part of principle three on indigenous people's rights, principle four on community relations, principle eight on monitoring and assessment, and principle nine on high conservation values. The protection of the six high conservation values, or HCVs, including the so-called social HCVs, four, five, and six, is a fundamental element of many other sustainability mechanisms, including the RSPO and the FSC. HCV5 on community needs is directly relevant to SR5. It requires the protection of sites and resources fundamental for satisfying the basic necessities of local communities or indigenous peoples for livelihoods, health, nutrition, water, etc., identified through engagement with them. Protection of these sites and resources contributes to the fulfilment of Stipulation 5.1 on avoiding and or mitigating negative impacts and of Stipulation 5.2 on ensuring sufficient land and other means are available for food security and livelihood purposes. HCV4, the protection of basic ecosystem services in critical situations, including protection of water catchments and control of erosion of vulnerable soils and slopes, is also important to food security and livelihoods, especially in relation to Stipulation 5.1 on the avoidance of negative impacts. Detailed guidance on how to identify and protect the HCVs is set out in the HCV Common Guidance. This is provided on the website of the HCV Resource Network, or HCVRN. After they are identified, HCVs are protected through the implementation of effective management and monitoring mechanisms. Detailed guidance on these for HCV 5 and 6 is also provided by the HCVRN and can be found on their website. SR5 goes beyond the requirements of the RSPO, the FSC and other sustainability mechanisms in two important ways. These are firstly the requirement to take account of future as well as current community needs and so allocate additional areas of local people's lands. And secondly, in that greater emphasis is put on the independent verification of implementation and outcomes through social impact monitoring. To ensure that future community needs are fully met, a minimum of 0.5 hectares of land is allocated per person for farming purposes unless the particular circumstances of the community result in an exception being made 
with the consent of communities. As well as contributing to the protection of food security and livelihoods, this minimum land allocation reflects a precautionary approach to conservation. This is because having sufficient land available for agricultural purposes should minimise encroachment into conservation set-asides. The greater emphasis on independent verification of implementation and outcomes contributes to the fulfilment of stipulation 5.4. The allocation of 0.5 hectares of land per person may not be practical or desirable in some circumstances, however. The, the particular circumstances of communities are taken into account during the assessment and engagement processes and exceptions to the 0.5 hectare per person minimum allocation may be made in some cases. This requires the free prior and informed consent of communities. Possible exceptions to the minimum allocation include settings where current regulations already specify community land allocations that may be sufficient, where agriculture no longer plays a key role in food security and livelihoods, where population densities make the minimum allocation unachievable, where other means of livelihoods, such as hunting, fishing, NTFP collection, play a greater role than agriculture, where farming activities are relatively recent and where the customary or user rights of farmers are not well established or long standing, and where employment creation and other positive impacts of the operation may reduce reliance on agriculture as a means of livelihoods and food security. These circumstances should be taken into account in the planning process to ensure both that sufficient land is allocated for community needs in each specific setting, including future needs, and that this process is also practical and reflects the economic realities in each community. As mentioned, any deviation from the precautionary minimum allocation requires the fully informed free and prior community consent. Any changes to these allocations and arrangements that are made subsequently equally require the FPIC of communities. In relation to social impact monitoring, SR5 sets out in detail which aspects of community welfare need to be monitored to ensure that the food security and livelihoods of communities are being respected in practice. This enhanced social impact monitoring is intended to complement existing auditing and verification mechanisms, which do not currently look at social impacts in sufficient detail to ensure that community rights are being fulfilled. It involves the collection of baseline data during the planning stages and the periodic monitoring of key socio-economic indicators during the operational stage. These indicators are income and assets, food security, ecosystem services provision, access to social and economic infrastructure, and overall well-being. Further information is given in the text of SR5 in module two of the HCSA toolkit, in Appendix 2 of the SR's Implementation Guidance, in the Death Study on Social Impact Monitoring, and in the third training video on SR5 Operationalization. So to recap, SR5 requires companies to protect the food security and livelihoods of communities affected by their operations. This means avoiding or mitigating negative impacts, ensuring sufficient land and other means are set aside to meet community needs, having positive impacts on community welfare and monitoring social impacts to ensure that these outcomes are being achieved in practice. These objectives are met through the conduct of assessments, engagements with communities through the FPIC process, the co-development and agreement of an ICLUP, including land allocations for community needs and associated management and monitoring plans, and the conduct of periodic monitoring of key socio-economic indicators related to community welfare. Further detailed guidance on the implementation of SR5, including social impact monitoring, is given in the following two training videos.